to banks, you know, to come up with new standards and stuff. Please do do something for that credit card. We we want to get rid of it. We really want. It. So how do you protect against read uh, logic flows? Well, it's very straightforward. Again, this is all simple, but you're not doing it. You're not doing it. As simple as this. All you have to do is you keep as many parameters as you can on your server. Why do you want to pass all and each and every small parameter to the client? First, it's going to be slower because the, the parameters go back and forth. Second, you give a chance to the, to the hacker to play with it. You, you give him a grip, basically. Uh, pass them by reference instead of passing them by value. Like this, if I modify the reference, it will be an invalid reference, and that's it. And I can't modify it, and I will be screwed. And of course, you verify that it's authorized. You do verify from each and every transaction. Okay? It's not being done. I know it, I know it sounds simple. It is simple, but it's boring. That's why I'm, I'm not doing development anymore. What do you think? It's boring development, I know. But it's got to be done. So now the, the interesting attack, I mean interesting, everybody wants to steal money once. So that's, that's, that's the way you do it now, it's with those right uh, logic flows. Right logic flows is exactly the opposite. Uh, we don't read, we write. So write in that sense will be whatever that leaves a trace. So a transaction is a write. When I modify your personal information, whatever I do that leaves a trace, that modifies something, it's going to be a write. Again, applications are stupid, they, do, they just do what they are told, so you just told them to perform the fraud for you. And uh, again, uh, supposedly it will check, but it won't. It just never does. And what it does, it never does properly, so we'll still find the flow and we'll still bang on it. So of course, this one everybody has tried, even some of my colleagues who are not specialized into that kind of stuff. This is definitely the, the prime suspect. Uh, when you see something like this, your hands are itchy and you're going to try something like that. Everybody has in the, in, the, in the IT security industry. Instead, instead of, uh, of forwarding a message whereby you, 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 the, the money goes from my account to my friend, uh, I will change the from uh, field to the victim going to my friend or to a second of my account. So of course this is a prime suspect as far as uh, logic flows are, are concerned. Uh, because that's the very nature of that, uh, of that functionality. What you have to remember with all those uh, logic flows is the more, uh, the more features your, your bank application has, or any other application for that matter, this is just bank because, well, you steal money, it's nicer. But every other web application are the same, you know, when it comes to logic flows. Uh, the more features they have, the more, the, the, the more, the more easy it's going to be for us to find one that we can abuse in a way or another. So this one to abuse is very straightforward, of course, I steal money right away. Uh, but here I'm still not stealing from the bank. Imagine, uh, you know, I have to find a poor soul from which I will steal money. Sometimes you want to steal from the bank if you don't like the bank. So uh, another one, cash your order. Again, I have a very limited uh, financial uh, knowledge. Until recently, a cash order, I never received any. Uh, but we, uh, we stole many, many, uh, lots and lots of money using that on the other hand. By the way, before I continue, don't be scared. Huh? When I say we stole and so on, uh, we're totally legal. Huh? I don't want the police to storm and everything. Uh, this is whatever we've seen when we perform uh, application assessments before they go live. I may have forgotten to say that. So don't worry, don't go, don't go out and close your account right away with the bank. Uh, it's, it's, usually they do check. Uh, if it, it, well, if it's not now, help yourself from, from the team funds. Buying share discounted price, I love that because I don't know how to buy share properly. So uh, I, I don't know anything, how to follow the price and everything. So when you, <laughs> when you buy cheaper, you're pretty sure to never lose out, you know. Here we just attack the price number. Some people are a bit smarter than that. They will hard code, uh, because again, it's a, it's a prime suspect. They will hard code the price on the server, uh, on server side, so you can't modify it. But in which case, uh, in which case you just you just get them for free. In that, in that case, you just take the money from the victim instead of from your account. You know, if you can't get it cheaper with your money, then never mind. You know, you cheat even more, and you get it free. Again, share for free. I don't mind. Uh, transaction fees. Well, of course, banks charge transaction transaction fees for about everything. You lose a card, you whatever you do, you pay, pay and pay. 
So uh, pay and pay now doesn't really matter anymore because some uh, application lets you choose from which account you want to pay. I mean, you want to pay from your own account A or your own account B. No, I want to I want to pay from the victim accounts a lot better. Again, I'm I'm going quick on all this because I want questions later on. Uh, but you know already that you cannot ask questions about authentication because I told you your authentication is useless, no matter how good it is. Additional uh, replay uh, mechanism whereby uh, a payment gateway... Uh, banks typically never accept credit card payments because they don't want to pay for the fees, the visa fees and all that. So, uh, you know, they know how it works, so they're not going to pay for it, they're not stupid. But on the other hand, sometimes banks, uh, uh, through the internet banking, propose you to buy insurance and all sorts of stuff that is underwritten by another company. They just, uh, so it's the other company, basically, who take, uh, who take the money, who pay the, who pay the fee. So here, typically, we do, uh, we do a payment first. We get a transaction number or an approval code or whatever from the payment gateway, which says that the, the guy has enough funds and whatnot. And you give this one to the bank and you, you purchase whatever is it that you wanted to purchase. When, uh, when the bank application is not done properly, and again, this is rare, luckily this is rare because this is extremely stupid, you can replay the transaction number several times and, and you know, you don't have to pay anymore. You just bypass the first, the first uh, part of the handshake. Uh, so eventually that there's, uh, you buy a, a travel insurance once for, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like this. And then uh, you buy a life, life insurance for the rest of your life and you're not paying for it. Uh, come back. This is extremely rarely found. Again, this, if it is in my slides, it means we've seen it several times. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother to put it in the slides. Uh, this is one of my favorite because the few other basically when you when you steal one million dollar I think the bank will find out uh, relatively quick I say relatively quick because you don't have any logs no matter what you think you don't have it I've, I've, I've worked on enough application and asked enough times for the logs to know that you don't have it so I can tell you before you check your own bank you know so uh, eventually you will find after a while that you're missing one million dollar because the customer uh, from which I would have stolen that money will come and knock at your door and say, hey man, where's my, where's my million dollar, you know? Uh, on the other hand, uh, one, of my, one of my favorite is definitely this one whereby you modify the, the payee information. So uh, some application allow you to, uh, to uh, pre-register your favorite payee. Let's say you pay, you pay your electricity bill every month are using internet banking. So all you have to do is to put amount and pay, pay and that's it and it's done because it's already pre-recorded. So but of course you can modify uh, the settings on that stuff. So what we do is that instead of modifying our own settings, we'll modify your settings. Uh, of course we intercept, we forward everything and then if the application is stupid it will let us change the settings. So now the strategy behind this is that I will change all your uh, payee information, account number basically, so that instead of uh, the money, instead of going to the electricity company or going to the tax department or what, your money will come to my account basically, and you will be the one paying me every month. You know, you will be the one clicking on R200 and pay R300 and pay. You know, I do it with a bunch of uh, users, sit and wait, and you know, let them pay their bills. And uh, as far as they are concerned, it will still show, you know, uh, inside their, their, their thing, it will still show, oh, I paid 200 bucks to the electricity company at that price. It's just the account number will not be the account number of the electricity company. But you won't know. You won't know it's not uh, until you check, you know, because it will still be written the name electricity company down there. How to protect against uh, right logic flows? Well, it's very straightforward. Again, this is exactly the same thing, but you're not doing it. So I insist again. Uh, you keep parameters on the server side, just do it. If you do that, list parameter, we can't mess anymore with it. Why do you want us to mess with your application in the first place? You don't want that to happen, you just don't. So uh, keep, keep it on your side. And if you do, pass them in, in, uh, in uh, reference again. Uh, verify, verify, verify. You never verify. If you verify that it's authorized, then we won't be able to do all that jazz. Are we clear on that? Because you're not doing it. Okay, we're clear. So it means next time I do such an assessment, I don't find this kind of thing, do I? Internal frauds. We don't have that many frauds in Singapore, of course, uh, because Singaporeans are very respective of the of the law. They respect the law very much. I guess in Malaysia it's pretty much the same, but in Europe, uh, nobody nobody bloody care. 
So uh, in Europe, you better pay attention to eternal fruits, you know. Some of the applications are there. Uh, most of them actually have, a, have what we call a backend and a front end. The backend is for the, the bank to, uh, to play with, to have all the logs, to, uh, to, uh, to, for the staff to work basically, credit authorization officer and, uh, and whatnot, to do their job, you know, to allow you to have your credit to, to do a lot of things. And uh, sometimes uh, we are able to run backend command on the front end, which is really interesting if this happens. Unfortunately, what we need to do this is that we need an initial uh, access. So it's either I will poach an ex-employee, or I am an ex-employee myself, or I do an educated guess. Right now, after more than 17 applications, we'll do educated guess. It will just work. They're all the same, you know. So this is very likely. This is going to be fast. But on the other hand, what we need is that we need to uh, the backend command to be runnable on the front end, and this is quite unlikely because it's, uh, it means the guys are a bunch of idiots. It means they either misconfigured the uh, the thing and they installed the, the backend component on the front end uh, servers, and uh, in which case it's easy to just remove, or it's a complete design mistake, and in which case you just trash away the application. But Usually, it's just a replay mechanism. Once, once you once you know how to run those commands, you you just run them instead of running them from the back end. You run them on the front end. Just log on as a normal, regular front end user. Bypassing roles again. Uh, the back end has loads of roles. Like I'm a, I'm a credit and uh, I'm a credit officer. I'm just a clerk or I'm a, I'm a complete administrator. Uh, what we need again is, is an initial admin access so that we know what we're doing. Or we have a, a good educated guess. Educated guess again, just works fine. Uh, this is very likely, therefore, uh, and we replay again. So this this one is just likely to happen. The the role bypassing always happen. Uh, so far, there's I think only one application that wasn't vulnerable to it in 17. So that's that's a lot of crap in those applications. Authoritative binaries. I don't want to talk about it. So I'll just pass. Masquerading as a customer, this is a little bit tricky for those technical of you out there, that might be fun. Uh, some idiots out there stage uh, two stages authentication, or they wanted to do something very fancy, you know, whereby you can log on uh, like you always do, uh, or you can do what they call a sign-in. This is mostly for support. So I log on as an administrator, I'm, I'm, I'm the bank administrator, and I want to check, uh, for example, the user Fabrice has got a problem with his balance, so I will sign in as Fabrice and I'm already logged on, you know, uh, so that I can look on Fabrice account and check that everything is uh, normal, I can do tech support. The problem with this is that since is uh, this is very unlikely, luckily, but the problem with this is that uh, if it's not done properly, basically uh, the two the two stage uh, authentication, uh, when we when we disconnect, what we do is that we uh, we log off but we don't sign off. So we're still on the application, but as far as the system is concerned, there is no more audit trail uh, leading back to us. I mean, we are there, but we're not there as far as the application is concerned. They won't, whatever you log will be, uh, don't know which user, they won't know. So this is when you can, you can start attacking like a, like a crazy and, and never get caught with it. Nobody likes to get caught. So this is... Uh, usually unlikely. This is a very unlikely kind of feature. If you have such a feature in your application, you should be really scared. This is not a good idea, it's bad design. So now, this is very important for all the banks out there in, in the audience. You're getting taken, care, taken advantage of every single time, and now we're going to talk about why you're getting taken advantage of. You will see it's very trivial. First, there's politics involved, always. I've, I've, I've talked with so many uh, security guys in banks, and uh, basically, the bank management always want the application ready for a very unreasonable day, rate date. Uh, they, they feel they paid enough already. You know, they, they paid millions of dollars for hardware and software. They don't want to pay security. Uh, the security team is always in between. They they cannot one side, cannot the other side. So you can't do much. And of course, uh, nobody like us. I'm gonna cry. Nobody like us. Uh, especially us, I mean, the, the third parties. So because the third party, the vendor hate us because we make them look like morons, which most of the time they are. Uh, the bank don't like us because the application will be late. If we don't stamp the application, it doesn't go on time. 
But remember, we don't do it for fun, you know. We don't stamp it it's for your own safety. A lot of banks don't realize that if we don't want to accept the application to go live, it's because you, <laughs> you're crazy to let it go live in the first place. So uh, don't hate us for that. Uh, but a vendor, you can hate us if you want. I don't care. It's, it's deserved, you know. When, when they do mistakes,